Hello. Today, we will talk about the features you can find in the Trip Allodometer tab. First setting we will see here is the Trip Detection and Trip Odometer Calculation. Apart from regular scenario settings, we will also find Trip Odometer Calculation Source, which could be continuous or between records. In continuous mode, the device will simply calculate the distance from the trip start to trip stop and send it to server. In between records mode, the trip odometer will be calculated from one record to another and then reset, so in case the whole trip duration is needed, the user would need to add all reported distances together in order to receive the total trip distance. While the between records mode is not used too frequently by our clients, it still has uses in some specific use cases like postal services, where trip stop might not be necessarily detected, but we still want to know distances from one point to another. Going forward, we have the start speed, which defines when the trip start will be detected, which is configured in kilometers per hour, and ignition off timeout, which specifies when device should detect trip stop. The trip start speed by default is set to 5 km per hour and can be set anywhere from 0 to 255 km per hour. But it is important to keep in mind that if we would set start speed to 0 km per hour, a trip start event could be triggered incorrectly due to GNSS drift. Next functionality we will find in this tab is the advanced trip settings, which allow us to configure how many eco-driving events are allowed during single trip. If we set a higher number under the allowed eco-driving events field, the penalty for each eco-driving violation will be lower when calculating the final eco-score for the whole trip. The setting just below called Remember I button RFID allows us to save the value of a read I button for the whole duration of a trip even if it is not attached to the reader. The following feature we can see in this tab is odometer functionality, sometimes referred to as virtual odometer, which allows us to calculate the vehicle odometer using different calculation sources. The source which is available on all of our devices is GNSS, which allows the device to simply take GNSS data and use it for calculations. Depending on the device, we could also select OBD or LVCAN source, which would use data from the vehicle to calculate the odometer. Another cool feature of virtual odometer is the ability to set the initial odometer value. That way, allowing us to receive vehicle odometer data, even if it is not read directly from the vehicle dashboard. The only important thing to note here is that if we would use GNSS as a source, the real vehicle odometer and the virtual odometer will drift apart over time due to various factors that affect the GNSS signal. So it is important to sync the odometers every once in a while, as that will allow us to always have the correct data being sent to our server. If OBD or LVCAN source is used, this should not be an issue as mileage data will be taken directly from the vehicle ECU. Finally, we also have the private and business mode settings here, which are expanded by selecting the feature priority. This feature allows user to select the vehicle usage type and also mask location data when the vehicle is being used for personal trips. To activate the private tracking mode, we can use the digital inputs NBL Bluetooth buttons or just set up a weekly schedule which will switch the device from business to private mode automatically. If we would want to use digital input as a trigger, we would also need to select if we have a button or a switch connected. If we have a button, the device will switch from private to business mode after a single press of a button, while if we have a switch, it will have to be on for the whole duration of the private trip. To make it easier to understand if the device is currently in private or business mode, we can also control digital output on devices that support it. 
So for example, once the private mode is selected, the device can switch on a LED to indicate the tracking mode. As mentioned before, one of the most important functions of this feature is to mask the GNSS data, so driver privacy would be protected when vehicle is used for personal trips. There are three modes we can select here. Normal, where the device will not mask the GNSS data and keep sending location to the server. Data sent as zero. In this mode, the device will send GNSS data as zeros while still sending other data about vehicle. Last, we can also select last good no position mode where the device will just keep sending the last known location data before switching to private mode. In case it is needed, we can also disable the odometer calculation to record only the distance vehicle covers in business mode. In case of some kind of critical event, like crash being detected or the vehicle being towed, we want to keep track of the vehicle. The private mode can be deactivated by towing, unplug, crash, or auto geofence events. In case of such accident, the device will immediately start sending the location data, so user knows where the vehicle is currently located. The final setting we see here is the trigger type. If external trigger is selected, the private tracking mode is activated via digital inputs or NBL Bluetooth button. However, if we want the mode to be activated automatically, we can set up weekly schedule, which will simply enable and disable the private mode on the set time. Additionally, we can set up daylight saving time, so we would not have to change the configuration when summer or winter time changes.